Hey, what's up? Slunts Joker here. Today we're going to be taking a look at Dragon Age Inquisition. Very, very big fan of the series. Uh, absolutely love Dragon Age Origins. Absolutely one of my favorite RPGs of all time, you know, outside of the Witcher series. Uh, Dragon Age 2 was kind of a letdown in a lot of ways, but I still enjoyed it when I was playing it. But looking back on it now, I realize that game had so many flaws. Uh, it was ridiculous with the repetitive areas that were just kind of clones of the previous ones. Basically, if you did one dungeon, you did them all. If you've been inside one mansion, you were inside all of them because they were just all completely identical. Uh, just sometimes maybe there was a different door or a different path lock than there was in a previous version of it. But other than that, they were completely identical. Uh, I'm happy to report that that is not the case in Dragon Age Inquisition. The world is absolutely just massive. Just huge, huge, huge. It really gives Skyrim a run, run for its money. No, it's not a one massive persistent world. There are instances that you can travel between uh, to go to different areas, but each of those areas are tr just fucking huge. They could be games in their own right in just those one areas, but, you know, luckily there's like seven of those areas. Plus, you have the, also this, you know, the area Haven, which is sort of your main starting area. Uh, you know, that's where the Chantry is, and you can go speak with the War Council uh, and speak with all your different party members and, uh, you know, go craft armor and weapons and do trading and every, everything you got to do, you can pretty much do in Haven. Uh, and then the rest of the world is really your oyster to go out and explore uh, as you see fit. Uh, but before we go ahead and jump into the rest of the review, let's go ahead and take a look at the game's options. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are in the options menu for Dragon Age Inquisition. Let's go ahead and take a look first. We're going to go into gameplay. Uh, as you can see here, Friendly Fire, nice option to have if you want, but you know, I've got it disabled. But if you're more of a hardcore player, maybe you're going to want to go ahead and use that. Uh, per Persistent Gore, also a nice feature to see. Uh, so basically the blood and gore as you're going through combat will sort of build up on the characters. When you go into the cutscenes, they'll sort of still be covered in all of that blood, which is, you know, it's quite nice to see, actually. Uh, pause while targeting AoE is pretty self-explanatory when you're doing all your area effect attacks, like spells, like if you're going down a massive blast of fire or ice or whatever, uh, it'll sort of just pause so you have time to aim where you want it to go, and then you hit the button and it will just go automatically right back into full-time game. Uh... Auto pause tactical camera, also pretty much self-explanatory when you go into the tactical camera to give orders to your party members uh, and to, to execute maneuvers or just move to other locations. Uh, this will pause the co combat so that you have time in order to do that. Uh, going down to interface, uh, you have the option to hide your helmet, which is good. I particularly don't like seeing the helmets on in the game, uh, especially like going into cutscenes and things like that. Uh, the tone icons, this is really nice to see, uh, something that was in Dragon Age 2, which I really didn't care for, which they carried over into this one, but now you can at least disable it. What this does is, when you are in conversations, let's say you were going to make a decision or a comment that might be considered good or bad, they would have sort of like a blue icon or a red icon to tell you this is good and this is bad. And personally, I don't really want that extra element of hand-holding, I'd like to just make the decision for myself and you know follow my own moral compass as to what is right and what is wrong rather than the game telling me this is right this is wrong uh, hud visibility contextual i have it set to which limits it a bit and makes some part of the, element of the hud go away uh it's nice that it's there but i would like to see a little bit more expanded options on this i'd like to be able to add and remove certain elements of the user interface as i see fit um particularly the quest reminders when you're going around and it tells you what the upcoming quest is and what you have to be doing. Uh, you know, it's nice to see it there, but I would like to be able to hide it as I don't need to see it 24-7. Also, you can go into your journal at any time and see what your upcoming quest is, and I think that would be a much more viable option to have it there all the time showed up. And then, of course, we've also got a few more things you can disable down here, like the text that shows up for damage and things like that. So nice that you can go ahead and do those. Uh, controls, I uh, will say that there was uh, some minor control issues with the mouse and keyboard, which I did have to uh, remap most considerably. Uh, the strafing and the looking around with the camera, which can be done by default, it would be with A and D, which allows you to turn the camera left and right, and then Q and E would be your strafe, uh, which I've gone ahead and you can see here as I've, I've swapped those around is I need to be strafing a lot more than I do need to be turning the camera because the mouse does not have a free look where you just move the mouse around. It's sort of more like a traditional MMO control scheme where you would have to hold down like your right mouse to look around or you can also look around while you're in combat if you're holding your action button, which is your left mouse, which is for combat. So if you're holding that down, it will still look around. But other than that, the controls are pretty good. Uh, as long as you're used to MMOs, 
uh, and things like that. It might otherwise it might be a little bit different for you. I know some people have had issues with the controls and have even said they wanted to play with a controller. Uh, I did toy with the idea at the beginning, but then I realized, hey, I'm on a PC, so fuck that. Uh, audio, you know, pretty standard fare, but at least they do have separate options here for all the different volume types. Master, sound, dialogue, and music, so that's very nice. Uh, dynamic range mode, have that on headphones, but they've got the full gambit of options here, which is pretty much, uh, you know, you see in every Frostbite game. This is very familiar options as to what you would see in, like, the Battlefield series games. Uh, and then confirm changes. Uh, did I change anything? I don't know. Let's just say no. Uh, display coming down here. 1920 by 1080, 144 hertz. Obviously, it does support up to 4K. All the different various refresh rates. Uh, vertical sync. I don't know why that's set to on. It should not be. Uh, gamma and then graphics API. If you are one of the more modern cards with the AMD users, you can use Mantle, which should give you a decent boost in performance. But as I'm playing on two 780s, we won't be doing that. Uh, confirm changes. Yes, I did want VSync off. Don't know why it was on. Uh, graphics. Here we go. All the goodness here. Quite good looking PC port. As you can see, it's got all the standard fare at, with the Frostbite engine. You got your mesh tessellation quality texture, uh, which goes above Ultra actually. It goes all the way up to this option called Fade Touched, which I have no idea what that actually is, but it's above Ultra, so I assume it's better. Let's just go with that. Uh, shadow quality, Ultra. Terrain quality, vegetation, water. Post-processing, uh, this something I would like to be, I'd like to see broken down into separate options because this, ha this has depth of field and motion blur all bundled into the same option. Uh, you know, motion blur, not something I'm a big fan of. Depth of field would be okay, uh, but I'd like to have separate options for all of these rather than just having everything bundled right into one option. Uh, ambient occlusion, HBAO full, so that's what's pretty good. Uh, effects quality, ultra, post process, post process anti aliasing. Don't know exactly which anti aliasing this is. Uh, they say it's some, it's a lower performance cost than multi sample anti aliasing, and it does look pretty good. As I'm actually running MSAA off, the reason for that is it did give me a significant uh, boost in my performance, as I saw in uh, Total Biscuits port report where he talked about the, you know, the frame difference between using MSA and turning it off, and I have to say I'm a lot happier with the consistent frame rate that I'm getting up around 100 FPS now with the MSAA turned off. So as you can see there, lots of options in this game. Really, really nice to see. Uh, indicative of a good quality PC port, and I'm happy to report that for most parts it is. There's a couple of little minor bugs here and there. I've seen some flickering textures, which may be due to SLI. I'm not 100% sure it is. I've not tried it out. In single card but they're sort of intermittent they don't happen all the time so you know it's it's I'm dealing with it for the time being because it is an absolutely amazing game outside of those minor technical issues uh, also as I mentioned in the options menu there was an issue with the strafing in the camera with the default keyboard controls so if you don't like that and you're not you know you have you're not really a traditional MMO player which the combat and the movement is very traditional MMO-esque uh, style of movement and, and key binding. So if you're not used to that, you might want to go ahead and try to change it around a little bit to get to your liking. Graphically speaking, the game is absolutely gorgeous, built upon the Frostbite 3 engine, which we know from the Battlefield series, most recently Battlefield 4, um, you know, which despite its technical difficulties on netcode and things aside, uh, it is an absolutely beautiful game. It's a good engine. It's well optimized. Uh, it scales very, very well in SLI, and that uh, has not changed with Dragon Age Inquisition. I'm seeing good, solid performance on SLI, both of my cards scaling at like 90% plus usage, which is great to see. Uh, and with MSAA turned off, I'm seeing consistent frames up around 100 FPS plus. Uh, now, there is one thing maybe some of you aren't aware of, that the cutscenes in this game are actually locked at 30 frames per second. The developer, uh, Bioware, has said that this had to do with frame times and things like that. But there is a fix out there. It's on PCGamingWiki.com, and I'm going to put a link down to, in the description to them once again, as I did in my Far Cry review. Um, there are a few fixes on there. Some, If you're having issues with certain things, they might have uh, fixes on there for you. But more specifically, they did have the... Um, a way to remove the 30 FPS cap, which is very, very simple by just adding a command line uh, in, you know, in the game's properties in Origin so that you can boost it up to 60 or whatever you want beyond that. And apparently, according to PC Gaming Wiki, the only time you might see issues with this would be in the multiplayer. And I'm not really playing much of the multiplayer. I have tried it a couple of times, didn't really enjoy it too much, and there was only three levels, so I don't really see myself digging a whole lot of time into the multiplayer, uh, maybe until they expand it or it gets a lot more interesting, because right now I'm really not enjoying it that much. 
Uh, gameplay and story wise, I have to say I'm really, really pleased. The uh, the story really does pick up right in the middle of you know the whole Dragon Age universe. You sort of have to be very familiar with the lore of the series um, because they just kind of drop you right in there. And if you don't know the backstory, um, you might feel a little bit lost and like like you've missed out on something. Uh, thankfully, they do have this thing called the Dragon Age Keep, which you can go to dragonagekeep.com. Uh, you can use this to sort of import your saves from previous games if you had them linked to your Origin account, which hopefully you did. And you can import them onto Dragon Age Keep. And you can even change the decisions you've made. Or if you haven't played it all in the past, you can go ahead and start characters from scratch and they'll give you a basic outline of the story leading up all the way to Inquisition. And you can make all of the decisions, the major plot decisions that you would have made if you had played those games and have that play out into this into this game. And you will see some of it spill over in some of these story elements and side content, uh, especially, you know, when talking with certain people in the game that were in previous titles like Liliana and Varric. So it's nice to see that that level of involvement between the different titles even though you know they've been some years apart it's nice to see everything kind of get tied together in that same universe so if you have played previous dragon age titles or even bioware titles uh it's going to be very very familiar territory a lot of it involves talking to you know npcs and you know your party members and sort of feeling them out and learning about them and which kind of gives the whole backstory and more lore to everything uh and you can even get involved with personal things in there lives and do quests for your party members which can then help build favor with them and then they might like you more and could even possibly butt into romantic relationships gay straight or otherwise uh that is no joke i mean you you can hook up with almost like anyone in this game uh even the big bull there's a very very interesting sexy and uh, gay sexy between the two guys if you hook up with the bull um there's actually a video out online if you can go find it and look it up it's pretty pretty funny uh, besides that so you know like i was saying if you played Bioware games before, you should know what you're getting into. It's really not changed the formula all that much. Um, you know, you're going out and you're doing quests, and uh, combat is sort of very familiar with Origins, as well as a kind of Bioware where you can freeze time and sort of issue squad commands to the different party members. You could say, you do this move, and you do this move, and you move over here into cover, and then you hit one button, and everything just all executes in like a symphony of awesome combat madness, and just, and everything on the screen just gets destroyed. Uh, but the combat is difficult, though, don't get me wrong. I actually had to tweak down the difficulty. I had started out playing on hard, which should be, you know, a decent difficulty for seasoned RPG veterans. Uh, and I'm, you know, I am a pretty decent RPG veteran, I have to say, but I had to turn it down to normal because I was getting into some areas with enemies that were even just one level higher than me, and I was getting absolutely owned. Um, the good thing is when you are doing some of these quests, if you tr if you do try to just kind of power through the story, you might find yourself getting owned in combat because the story might be a little bit head ahead of where you should be at that point if you were doing the side content. So sometimes you might want to just pick up a story quest and you know then go off and maybe do a few side missions here or there and build up your level, build up your power, and then you can go out and you can tackle those more difficult quests and continue the storyline along, which will you know definitely help increase the time of it. And if you do and if you do everything in the game, you're looking at at least a hundred plus hours of gameplay, with probably just 90 hours in, in just the main story alone. So at the end of the day, is Dragon Age Inquisition worth your time, even right now, right at launch? I'm happy to report, yes, absolutely. Uh, I feel that they've sort of recaptured the essence of Dragon Age Origins and what was so great about it, and they sort of built upon it. I don't think the story and character interactions are as strong as Origins, but it's a very, very good effort, and it's a hell of a lot better than Dragon Age 2 was. Uh, you know, the world is huge. You're not going to see any environments more than once. Everything, you know, there's lots of different varied environments. There's grassy areas, snowy areas, uh, deserty areas. So you're going to see a whole lot of different scenery in this game. There's a lot of content. You're getting so many hours of gameplay for your money, especially for a single player game. Mostly, yes, they do have the co-op there if you do want to dabble in that with your friends. It would have been nice to see maybe get co-op integrated into the full campaign unfortunately they didn't do that this time around and you know some people might not like it. let me know down in the comments below what you think you think a game like this would be good with four player co-op throughout the entire game or do you think maybe they should just keep it just single player and you know because you like to do things on your own and you don't want people to be involved in meddling in your affairs within the single player story um so let me know down in the comments below what you think about that uh, but you can go out and pick up dragon age inquisition right now uh the 
might be a few minor little bugs here and there, but I'm sure those will get patched out soon. Um, besides those, it's a solid title right at launch, and I can give it my full blessing. Absolutely recommend that you play this. Uh, I've seen it on G2A, actually, for only around $42, even $1.37, as the prices do fluctuate on there. Uh, if you want to get to G2A, there is a referral link down in the description below. It helps out my channel a lot if you do use that. So if you're thinking about checking out Dragon Age Inquisition and want to save a little money, use my link down below to get to G2A, and you can pick it up on there for the PC. Uh, as always, guys, I thank you so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy the video. There will be an episode of Slut Tech coming this Monday with a special guest Top 10 Gamer, my friend Brandon from over there, uh, from youtube.com forward slash top 10 gamer and also top 10 gamer.com. Uh, so he's going to be special guest filling in for Kurt on Slut Tech uh, for the Monday episode. And we're going to be recording that later today. Uh, so thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. Don't forget, you can always follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Joker Slunt or get back to my channel anytime by going to jokerslunt.com. I'll catch you guys next time. Ta-ra!